get that train moving. I've loved Resident Evil in all its janky live-action glory. I've loved Resident Evil as a first-person survival horror. I've loved it in its quieter moments as we tiptoed through an abandoned police station. And I've loved it, somewhat begrudgingly, as boulders got punched into volcanoes. But there's one element in all of Resident Evil's long history that I love above all else. And that is Jill Valentine. Right. How's that going for you? So you can imagine how playing the Resident Evil 3 remake feels. We finished the game and are here ready to bring you our thoughts. But do note, we've tried to make this review as spoiler free as possible, but it will include new gameplay. So if you're planning on going into the RE3 remake totally fresh, best to play it first and then come back here later. Right, with that out of the way, here's five things we loved about the Resident Evil 3 remake and one thing we didn't. So for the uninitiated, Resident Evil 3 takes place either side of its predecessor, Resident Evil 2, in that former STARS agent Jill Valentine, suspended after the Spencer Mansion incident, that is, the events of the original Resident Evil, is active in a rapidly unraveling Raccoon City before Claire Redfield and Leon S. Kennedy, but due to a bit of a time jump in the middle of the game, leaves the city after those two have already long vacated the area. Jill isn't working alone, however. Early on, she's rescued from a potentially sticky situation by Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service squad member Carlos Oliveira. And after a bit of a rocky introduction, Umbrella is the company responsible for this mess, remember? The two work together to try and get out of the city in one piece. Or two pieces, respectively. The time you'll spend in Raccoon City is easily some of the most fun in the Resident Evil 3 remake. Not only will you start the game in Jill's downtown apartment, spotted in a still image during the prologue of the original game, but the neon drenched streets are packed full of character. No, wait, they're packed full of the undead. But also lots of character, as well as references to other Capcom properties and horror icons. The story has been remixed somewhat in the remake, in many ways more liberally than the story of the RE2 remake, but it's all in the service of a more cohesive plot. We won't spoil anything here, but we will say that RE fans will enjoy exploring every inch of the city that isn't on fire. There are certainly some secrets stashed away, but it's mostly about drinking in that atmosphere as the situation goes from bad to worse and Jill simply does what she can to survive and get everyone out safely, while also taking every little bit of loot that isn't nailed down, obviously. Resident Evil 3 is absolutely Jill Valentine's story, and honestly, she's never looked or sounded better. Both Carlos and Jill are brilliantly performed here. Jill especially is every inch the stone cold professional, rolling her eyes in the direction of the UBCS every chance she gets, yet going out of her way to protect the vulnerable wherever she can. One sequence towards the end of the game will have you air punching as she steps up to bat to destroy everyone and everything standing in her way, all while dropping one-liners like they're going out of fashion. It's pretty much the embodiment of big dick energy. That said, Carlos definitely makes the most of his screen time too, and you'll warm to him much quicker than you think you will. The pair's chemistry, when they're on screen together, is pretty electric too. But in fact, every main character in the game is portrayed exceptionally well, including Mikhail and Nikolai, who make explosive use of every scene they're in. The real scene stealer is of course Nemesis though, who, as in the original, doggedly pursues Jill throughout the game. He has more transformations compared to before, but it's when he's in his early forms, showing up at intervals on the streets of Raccoon City to give Jill the runaround, that he's by far at his most terrifying. Just the sight of him arriving on the scene is enough to send you into a blind panic, but veteran players will be happy to know that holding your nerve and downing him, albeit temporarily, will mean he drops some pretty sweet loot. Nemesis has multiple new tricks up his sleeve to ensure that there's never a dull moment 
with him. Pretty much every time you meet, he's packing some new twist to how you faced him before, which certainly helps keep things interesting. It's kind of a shame that later in the game his appearances become far more scripted and linear in nature, but it's perhaps inevitable as more locations and enemies come to the fore. And pretty much every new element in Resident Evil 3 is a hit, from the eerily quiet corridors of the Spencer Memorial Hospital to the fluorescent hive of activity that is Nest 2. The pace never lets up as you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with enemies like the Hunters Gamma and Beta and Pale Heads. Most enemies, aside from your classic commoner garden zombie, require a particular trick or tool in order to take them out in the most economic way. So as usual, it pays to experiment or, of course, read the files. To compensate for Jill's new dodge ability and her larger arsenal of weapons, and just because it makes more sense for a story set in a city that has been completely overrun, zombies are far greater in numbers here, and it also feels like they move a lot faster. That means that things can go south extremely quickly if you don't pay attention to your surroundings and find yourself cornered. When this happens in a crowd, it can often feel a bit unfair though, not to mention it looks rather sloppy, as when you're attacked once in a horde, it can be pretty much impossible possible to regain control of the situation as you're batted and thrown from one altercation to the next. That said, the greater numbers do give you more scope to use the environment to your advantage, and you should absolutely keep your eyes open for any opportunity in which you can save on bullets and take out multiple zombies at once. Even without Nemesis or any of the new enemies, RE3's combat definitely has a different rhythm to it. Think more Resident Evil 4 than Resident Evil 2. The downside to all of this is that the Resident Evil 3 remake is faithful to the original in some not so great ways too. Chief among these being that it is pretty short. Even while taking time to explore and backtrack, you'll likely clear the campaign in just under six hours. Seven if you include cutscenes. And unlike the RE2 remake, there are no epilogues now, or alternate scenarios. There is a shop where you can spend points accumulated from completing in-game challenges to buy new unlockable items like weapons and costumes, but this will likely only appeal to more die-hard fans. Also true to the spirit of the original game, the Resident Evil 3 Remake is way more action-heavy than the RE2 Remake, and features very few puzzles. While that isn't necessarily a bad thing, and those who played the original may have expected as much, it's just a bit of a shame that Capcom didn't take the opportunity to make RE3 have the best of both worlds, more action and more exploration. Especially since a lot of defining features of the original, like giant spiders, the gravedigger boss, and the live selection system, have been cut in the remake. And it would have been a lot of fun to be given the opportunity to run around Raccoon City for a little bit longer, solving some puzzles and doing some detective work as the world burns. But this time around, your inventory is packed with weapons and only the occasional fancy looking box, rather than a stack of extremely unorthodox keys. And for many players, that might be seen as a big plus. The thing is, the new locations and enemies in RE3 are great, as are the weapons you fight them with, but it's hard not to feel like everything is a little rushed and all too brief when compared to the lavish retelling that RE2 got, especially when a lot of the assets for that game are reused here, including a very brief yet enjoyable trip back to the RPD as Carlos. As a huge fan of Jill Valentine, it's hard not to feel shortchanged when Capcom has done such a fantastic job of bringing her to life, and yet our time with her is overall too soon. To the cynical, it may also go a little way to explaining why the multiplayer experience Resident Evil Resistance was included with the RE3 single-player campaign. There, of course, wasn't a lot of story there to begin with, but it feels like, after the huge success and overwhelmingly positive response to RE2, Capcom could have taken a bit more time to craft an even more memorable experience here, without leaning so hard on the combat and its more action-heavy elements to pad things out. We've stood here before, at the intersection between Resident Evil's old-school atmospheric survival horror and the later game's so-called survival action. And the RE3 remake feels like it's just tipping that prime, not quite falling into the latter category by any means, but there's just the vaguest hint of it there. 
Yet it's still a thoroughly enjoyable time. A thrilling chase through Raccoon City with Jill Valentine. <sighs> what could be better? This guy knows what's up. So, Code Veronica next, Capcom? Yes, please. Do drop a like and maybe even a subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and look out for more Resident Evil 3 content coming up on the channel very soon. Until then, stay safe out there. Bye!